Okay. So last time we saw that our page rank should have approximately the following property. If you have a particular <coughs> web page P that is pointed at uh, by a few uh, other web pages. Um, so for IP and then we would like to have the property that the rank of the page P is some of the ranks of all web pages that point to that page, right? Because they kind of give recommendation to this page, but prorated by the number of outgoing links. So this should be equal to the sum over all pi that point to p. This is a notation that we will use a lot. Uh, so this means that uh, web page pi has a, an outgoing link to uh, page p. And then here we have a ranks, rank of page pi divided by the number of outgoing links uh, of uh, page pi, right? So we prorate. Now, why do we want to have such or similar property is, well, you can see that a rank of a page will be <coughs> high, it will be large, just in case it is pointed at by pages that themselves have high page rank divided, prorated by the number of outgoing links of that web page, right? Now, uh, this has to be true for all uh, P that belongs to the World Wide Web, right? Now, so this is not just one equation, but as many equations as you have uh, web pages uh, on the internet, right? Now, this huge system of linear equations um, in terms of rows uh, can be uh, replaced by a single matrix equation that uh, looks like this. So we introduce a uh, matrix G, let's see, let me use the same notation as uh, I used in the notes, G1, right, that looks like this. So this is matrix G1, and uh, the entries of that matrix right, at position ij will be non-zero just in case P, page pi has a, a link to page pj, in which case the value is 1 over the number of outgoing links of pi. And for pages that do not point, that are not pointed at the uh, entry is equal to zero, right? So notice now that sum total of all elements in every row is equal precisely one, right? Because you have this many entries of this size, so that's precisely um, the entry, right? Now, this property then simply says that if you have a, a, a row vector, um, so this would be uh, of, uh, of uh, ranks, row 1, row 2, all the way to row n, where n is uh, a capital N is equal to the total number of uh, 
pages on roll right web. So it's an extremely long vector, and this vector we will call vector of ranks, right? Now, if you multiply this raw vector with this matrix, let's see what we get. Well, we will get another raw vector. And what are the entries of this vector? Well, to get the j entry, right? So here is position j. You have to multiply this row with the jade column, right? Now, in the jade column, you have everywhere zeros except, say here is another n, uh, when a page points out, points to, um, to the jade page, right? So everywhere will be zero except for the web pages that point to J. So all of these guys will be killed and the only uh, remaining, uh, the only rows that uh, will not be multiplied by zero are these that correspond to these uh, um, entries here. And that's precisely what you have here, right? Because Right, this will be this we, uh, we call this we call a raw i for simplicity, right? And this equation now says that the, the, the what you should get here is precisely the very same uh, raw vector, raw one, raw two, up to rho n, right? Because the output should be precisely the, uh, if you want, we can put here pj, pj, and then uh, you get, and this is our rho j, right? So here you want to get precisely rho j, and in a, in a, uh, and now, because this is a, a raw vector, and in linear algebra we are used to treating vectors as columns, uh, we put here, uh, yeah, shall we put the transpose? Well, okay. So this is actually a raw transpose, right? Because it's uh, made into um, a raw. Okay, now, so Alex? in short, Alex? yes? Can you explain why the, you get another vector out? It shouldn't it be a sub summation? Shouldn't it just be the page rank? Yes, yes, so let's see. What do you, so if you multiply, let me put then, uh, let me not skip any steps. Um, so let's write it in full, what is this? Well, this will be the entry here on the j place, right? Will be when you multiply this vector by this column. So everywhere you will get multiplied by zero, except precisely over these pages, let's call them P, uh, pi that point to page pj, and the value will be a row, uh, a row i prorated by the number of outgoing vectors, uh, outgoing links uh, of pi, right? So these are the entries. But what is this? Our equation says this should be precisely row j. Yeah? So this should be precisely rho 1, rho j, up to rho m, right? Um, so it's just a shorthand for the, 
for the this system of linear equations, just writing them in matrix form. So essentially, we want rank uh, row vectors transposed times our matrix G1 to be precisely the same uh, vector row transposed. Okay. Now, the question is, uh, <coughs> how do we know that such a vector exists? And uh, is this vector unique? Because you remember, we concluded that page rank should be unique to avoid the arbitrariness in assignment of ranks. <coughs> in linear algebra, this type of equation, uh, namely uh, rho transposed times g uh, equals lambda times uh, rho transposed, uh, if this holds for any lambda, right, then lambda is called a single, uh, it's called eigenvalue. And uh, uh, vector rho is called uh, eigenvector corresponding uh, to uh, this particular value lambda, right? So in our case, we are essentially claiming that this matrix should have an eigenvalue that corresponds to eigenvalue 1, right? Because here it's just rho. <coughs> and not only that it exists, but that it's also unique. In fact, in general, for one eigenvalue, you can have several in linearly independent eigenvectors. Um, so, so how many of you are familiar with eigenvalues and eigenvectors? Okay, so, uh, uh, so very briefly, uh, how can I write this? I can write this uh, as uh, rho transpose times g equals lambda times, and then um, uh, and then um, identity matrix, and then a rho here. Right? This is just identity matrix. So I is just 1, 0, 1, all diagonals are all uh, ones and all uh, of diagonal are zero. Why do we write it in such a form? Well, because then this equation can be written as rho transposed times g minus lambda i is equal to zero vector, right? Now, this is a system, a homogeneous system of linear equations. And from linear algebra, we know that it has no, a non-trivial solution, just in case the determinant of this, of the system matrix is equal to zero, right? So the determinant is usually written as with this absolute value kind of type. Uh, is or that let's use this might confuse you with modules so let's write it that of oh, this is equal to zero but what does this matrix look like well this matrix looks like this uh, if this is g11 then you will have minus lambda then here you will have just g uh, one two, and so forth. Then here you have g21, and then g22 minus lambda, and so forth, uh, gmn minus lambda. Uh, this has to be equal to zero, but clearly when you compute this, uh, you will get a polynomial in terms of lambda that is of size exactly uh, what uh, this size uh, is, uh, 
so it can have at most so of degree n, so it can have at most n roots. So any square matrix of size n by n can have at most n eigenvalues, and uh, some of them might be mutually equal, right? Um, if uh, uh, the, the, uh, how many equal ones as a solution, so you get, can get the roots with multiplicity, and uh, um, if uh, a root ap uh, appears with n time, uh, k times, uh, then we say that this is a root with multiplicity k. Okay. Um, so, the, so the, the whole point now how this applies to our case is uh, uh, that we are claiming here that uh, uh, this matrix uh, uh, G uh, minus in our case just uh, lambda, so a matrix that is uh, G11 minus lambda all the way to G n n minus lambda, that uh, when you set, uh, uh, when lambda, so for uh, lambda equals to one, this should be equal to zero. Well, there is no reason why this should be the case. We have no control of our matrix because it's completely determined by uh, by the structure of the web, the structure of the links, right? Okay, so now what's next? Ah, yes, so because we are multiplying from the left rather than from the right, uh, the row is called a left eigenvector. Okay, so um, we now want, uh, you remember the idea is we now want to fix uh, this matrix, right? And as I mentioned last time, interestingly enough, uh, the fix for that is uh, um, completely intuitive, okay? Um, and in fact, uh, it is based uh, on a heuristics that uh, uh, Page and Brim had of a random surfer, right? Um, if you consider the situation in which someone chooses at random a starting point on the web and keeps, keeps following the links, right? Uh, then the idea is uh, that if a page is important in the sense that it's pointed at by pa web pages that themselves are important, uh, namely lots of web pages point at them and all the way if you keep backtracking. Um, then if you have such a random surfer uh, and if he or she serves the web for a very long time and you keep a tally for each web page, how many times the surfer has visited it, uh, right? Uh, then this number of uh, uh, visits, the fraction of uh, uh, visits over all uh, the number of uh, total number of links served, uh, followed, uh, should approximately intuitively correspond to a uh, uh, to importance of that web page. So let's see how is this related uh, to uh, this uh, uh, property actually on the very top with the sum. Well, uh, here, 
here is another intuition. So instead of uh, repeating, uh, letting someone uh, do a very long run and then count how many times each web page was visited, we can have another intuition. We can um, again let the surfer surf the web for a very long time and then uh, we look at a, uh, we stop it at a randomly, at a random number and look at what page we are at the moment. Right? So, um, we could simply calculate, we could look at all possible surfing paths that last, say, t many steps and see for each web page how many paths terminate with that page. And then clearly, this will be the probability to be at that web page after this many clicks, right? So again, uh, you let your surfer click, I'll say, t many times, right? Where t is a large number. And you look at all possible surfing histories that are that long. Right? And then you see, uh, you form a quotient, which is the number of uh, uh, histories ending with uh, uh, page <coughs> P versus total number of histories of land uh, T, right? That would give you the probability that if you randomly choose pages and you click T many times, that you will be caught at instant T at the web page uh, P. Is it clear? Right? So you fix a large number, say a million clicks. You look how many surfing histories, of course, hypothetically, this is a mental experiment, we don't do that, right? But you look how many surfing histories end up with page P. And then you also see how many surfing histories in total, regardless of where you end then the probability to end at a particular page P will be exactly the ratio of the number of histories ending with P divided by total number of histories of this T. So what do you think? For this to be an adequate uh, reflection of, uh, uh, of the importance of a web page, what should uh, this number satisfy this ratio? What do you think? <laughs> if for, say, t you get one set of probabilities, and then for t plus 1 you get totally different set of probabilities, would the, such a uh, quantity be meaningful as a important, measure of importance. Uh, no. Assume that uh, you look at the probabilities when t is a million, <coughs> and then you look uh, uh, for the same probabilities uh, when uh, t is equal um, 10 million. They should not be too different, uh, right? Because we want this page rank to stabilize after reasonable amount of time. So in short, if this is to be used uh, as a measure of importance of the web page, as t goes to infinity, this quantity should converge. Right? Uh, for every web page, if you serve uh, 
a million clicks, probability to end up at P should be almost the same as probability to end up here after 10 million clicks. You want that these numbers to stabilize. What else should it be independent of? It should be independent from the starting point, right? Now, how can this looks, it should be true, but uh, I, I imagine a very strange internet that is bipartite. So you can split all of the web pages into two sets and all the links are from one side to the opposite side. Now, if you start from this side and you surf uh, even number of times, you make even number of clicks, the probability to end up here will be zero, right? Because after even number of clicks, you will end up always on this side. Uh, and similarly for, for this side. So in, if internet looks something like that, right? This will never converge. So somehow we have to change the way, we have to slightly uh, modify our structure of internet by ensuring that something like this cannot happen, right? So this is one of the problem, problems, right? Um, another uh, situation like this, it doesn't have to be bipartite, but it might happen that for certain point, all the cycles that start with a web page and finish with that page are divisible by a fixed number. Right? Then this will also fail because in order for the, if you to be uh, back at the starting page, the number of clicks has to be divisible by this number so it cannot converge. So we have to handle uh, this problem. And it turns out that in fact, having dangling web pages namely web pages that do not have any outgoing links, and uh, uh, having cycles, and maybe and also having uh, uh, traps, right? So uh, subsets in which all the outgoing links stay in the same in the same set. That these are the only obstacles in having this uh, to be convergent. Now, one would say, uh, well, you are going to change uh, what you think the internet looks like, uh, so it's not going to be any longer um, a reasonable definition. But lo and behold, uh, Page and uh, Brim fixed the problem in a totally intuitive way. Uh, uh, while ensuring that neither of these problems can happen. And what the way how they did it is by making the surfer impatient, right? So, so the surfer again chooses an arbitrary point, and then he uses a random number generator, right? That returns one, say, with probability 0. 85 and returns 0 with probability 0 0.15. And then he acts as follows. Each time he sees a link, he runs the random number generator. If he gets 1, he chooses to follow the link. If he gets 0, he chooses to choose a new starting point that is an arbitrary web page on the web. So it's kind of, you know, you follow links and then you get bored and then you go somewhere completely different. You again follow some links, you get bored, you jump again. Probability to get bored uh, will be 0.15 at least in the original form of the 
algorithm. And lo and behold, it turns out that uh, uh, with such a model, the, both the count of how many times you visit a particular website over a very long run, and the probabilities in this second model when you look all, uh, at all runs of certain length and see how many of them end up with your web page, they both produce the same results. So this is now our next task. Uh, we now want to find if we um, interpret our formulas probabilistically, uh, we want to see what happens to the original formula. Notice that, uh, uh, in fact, the original intuition is quite close. Why is that so? You remember the formula says that rho of p is equal to sum over all pi that point to p, rho of pi divided by the number of outgoing links of pi. Because what's the probability to reach this point? The probability is equal, probability to be here divided by the number of outgoing links, right? Because if you are here, then probability to get here is exactly one over the number of outgoing links, right? So this simply says probability to be at a position P is equal to the sum of probabilities to be on or any of these uh, web pages prorated by the number of outgoing links because if you are here, probability to go here will be 1 over the number of outgoing links, right? So let us now see if we make our surfer impatient, uh, how does our matrix change? Uh, so we have to solve two problems. First is dangling links. No, dangling web pages. Which is no outgoing links. <coughs> well, uh, remember in this case we decide that uh, uh, we should simply uh, uh, jump to a randomly chosen <laughs> web page, right? So our matrix G1 looked like this. Mostly zeros, except one over number of PIs, and then zeros, and then maybe number of uh, um, uh, P, uh, K, and so forth, but uh, when you have uh, uh, when you have a dangling web page, uh, you will have zeros everywhere because a dangling web page T does not point to any other web page. But we now ch change this. Uh, and define a matrix G2, what will be here with our um, convention that we choose a random web page and jump to that web page? What will this force, what will be here? So if you are at D, you with equal probability go to any of web pages with equal probability. So what will be zeros replaced by? Uh, one over n's everywhere. So G2 will be just the same like this, except here you will have one over n, one over n, 
1 over n anywhere, including this very same web page, because maybe if you randomly choose next web page, you choose exactly the page that you are sitting at. So matrix G2 is the same uh, as the previous matrix, except that uh, at uh, uh, dangling web pages, zeros are replaced by 1 over n. Okay? So this is the first surgery. The next surgery, what we have to make sure is to avoid, let me move to this corner of the world, we want to avoid getting trapped, um, getting stuck in traps, and uh, uh, having cyclicity problem. Yes? Um, so you said before with the bipartite example, in this universe this would be a problem. It will be still a problem, lo and behold. What about if you had a strange internet where most of them were dangling web pages? Would that kind of screw? Uh, well, if you had an internet uh, in which most pages are dangling, you wouldn't want to surf such an internet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good point, but the point is we are trying to build a model that works well in the real world. Uh, so. Of course, our solution should apply perfectly uh, to what you propose. It should work if most of the web pages are dangling. But the aim is uh, that when applied to real life internet, it should work well. So in fact, page rank will work for arbitrary graph whatsoever. But of course, if most of the web pages are dangling, it will be kind of uh, meaningless, right? But this is not the case in real life, uh, right? Okay, so now, uh, let's see what happens with that matrix if we make our surfer impatient, right? So let's look at the matrix, it looked, uh, uh, it looked like this, right? It had 1 over n, so this was matrix G2. 1 over n, 1 over n, 1 over n. And then here, mostly zeros, then 1 over the number of outgoing links pi, mostly zeros, 1 over outgoing links of pi, mostly zeros, and so forth. So now we are saying, by the way, this you can interpret if I am at the web page uh, PI, the probabilities to get to any of these web pages is zero because there are no links, and probability to get to that web page is precisely this. But now <coughs> I am being impatient. If I'm at the web page uh, PI, 